Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. Today I'm going to be doing a USB-C port mod on this micro. Uh, this will be an updated version to the one I previously posted. Right now I'm just inspecting the port. Uh, you want to make sure that everything's clean, all the solder is off the pads. You want a smooth surface to attach this uh, adapter. Uh, when you get the adapter you want to make sure you see those spikes sticking up and you also want to make sure that the solder on the pads are as flat as they can be because you're going to be pushing this up against the micro. Uh, right now I'm going to show you um, what would happen if you did get the adapter and the spikes are not exactly pointing straight up. You can do this on your own if you need to. Uh, I'm just showing you how to solder those spikes onto the adapter. So this should be uh, pretty easy. You're just gonna come in from the bottom and try to put those spikes through the hole of the Game Boy Micro port. You'll see here in a second that the uh, spikes will click into place, which they have. I find the best way to make sure that you get the port flush with the motherboard is to have a thumb on the top and your index finger pushing up from the bottom. And you're going to want to solder this first uh, pad here. I'm putting some flux here so that the solder will flow down into the hole and make a good connection with the pad below. You, you want to get the tip of your soldering iron full of solder, like that, so that when you tap the iron onto the pad, the solder will just flow right off the iron. Just like that. Right now I'm just checking to make sure the port is still flush with the motherboard. You want to keep that as flush as you can. so. You don't have any problems putting the micro back together. Alright, we're adding more flux. Uh, with this updated adapter, I've attached two resistors so that you can charge your micro using any USB-C cable. Uh, it has been tested, it works. Um, also, a new update to the adapter on the previous one, I used a board with a one millimeter thickness. That was a pretty tight fit. It did give a good look to the micro after it was put back together, but it is a tight fit. So I decided to go a little smaller on the board thickness this time. It's a 0 0.8 millimeter. Um, there is a small gap when you do put it together, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, the gap does vary between regions. Uh, I've noticed with European micros, the gap is a bit bigger than US version micros or Japanese version micros. So your micro gap will vary. Uh, I'm just soldering the four anchor pins first. Uh, I did it this time because I think it was a bit easier. With these, you can add a good bit of solder onto them. The good thing about this uh, mod is that after you're done soldering everything, you're left with uh, really nice balls of solder. It's relatively easy to clean up the flux afterwards because everything's smooth. Throughout this video I do make a few cuts in the clips but 
This mod should take an experienced solderer about 10 minutes to do, but someone who's not that experienced, it should be maybe 15 to 25 minutes. When you solder these pins here, you want to start with the pins that are closest to that ribbon latch. Um, because they are, the front pins get in the way. So if you were to solder the front pins first and then try to do the back pins there, you will be kind of mixing solder together and the pins will bridge. Remember not to add an insane amount of solder here. I haven't had it happen before, but I do think that if you add way too much, the solder could bridge underneath the motherboard and taking off the adapter without a heat, a hot air station is relatively impossible to do. All right, so we have um, really good solder there. Go back and uh, clean the, the flux off with a Q-tip. Once again, just check to make sure the adapter is flush against the board. Everything looks good. Right here, I'm going to check to make sure none of the pins are bridged. The zero volt or the ground, there's two ground pins, the, the leftmost side, they should be, uh, what's the word? They should be connected, but the other pins, they should not have any continuity with each other. All right, everything checks out. Here I'm going to demonstrate how you can trade between two Pokemon games just using these USB-C ports. They are connected with all eight pins of the micro port. So you will have the ability to connect Game Boy peripherals. Um, the adapter here looks a bit strange. I did have a custom PCB made to make a USB-C adapter, but of course I got the uh, pinouts all confused and switched, swapped around. So. I have to use these um, these boards I made custom to test uh, different ports and whatnot. I also use these boards for measuring and creating new uh, new PCBs. These uh, Game Boy Micro Stands were made by a friend. Uh, I got them back in 2020 uh, from a guy on Instagram, Retromancy2020. You guys should go check them out. It's pretty cool. All right, I'm going in for the trade. Everything's going well. Uh, the problem with the USB-C as a link port is that when I do get the custom port link cable designed, uh, it'll only be one way. You can't flip the uh, cable over and trade. All right, everything looks like a success. Uh, thank you guys for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's informative.